Welcome to our Growing Young session here at Covenant. This might look a little bit different uh, since you're sitting in your home and Ron and I are sitting here, but we're still going to do the very best we can so that you can still get the information about Growing Young at Covenant. Uh, first, I would like to open with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for bringing us here today. And I, I don't mean necessarily physically here, but here in spirit, here in our own homes, um, knowing that we are still a church, we are a church of people, we aren't necessarily a church of a physical building. So we thank you that we are gathering here today. Please help us um, as we dive into this growing young chapter, um, help the conversation to flow, whether it's between Ron and myself or people at home or um, maybe some people sending in questions or comments. Um, help our church here to uh, remember that you are there for us. You are there for us to lean on and you are our strength. Help us to remember that. We thank you for everything here and for Pastor Michelle and all of the services that she provides for us online as well. Thank you for everybody who is behind the scenes, and you know who they are. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jen. Um, we wanted to make sure that we continued the series with you, and uh, so we felt this was the best way to do it. And uh, so part of the uh, time we're going to be sharing information with you, and at the end, as you alluded to, uh, we want to pose some questions to the group. So as we uh, post this, it'll be both on YouTube and the Facebook page for the Covenant Church. Uh, we invite you to spend time with those questions and answer them because we'd love to hear your thoughts on some of those things. Before we begin, um, we want to jump into the content. Um, and one of the things we've been doing uh, every session, if this is your first time watching, uh, it'll be new to you, but if you've watched or participated in our group together, um, you'll see that these are things that we've done regularly. One of the things we want to do is dispel the myths when we think about uh, churches that are growing young. We need to prune the distractions so only the branches remaining are those that help our churches grow young. Here are 10 qualities uh, your church doesn't need in order to grow young. And one of the things that uh, the research pointed towards was a precise size. We don't need to buy into the Goldilocks fantasy that some churches are too big, some churches are too small, some are just right. Sound like a nursery rhyme? <laughs> a little bit. Found that size doesn't matter. Uh, trendy location or region. Uh, the research always pointed towards the fact that you don't have to be in an urban setting or a rural setting to, to have successful youth ministries. Um, your late location does not matter. An exact age, uh, age of the church does not matter. Popular denomination or lack of denomination. An off the charts cool quotient. Although Jen and I are just oozing with coolness, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need people like Jen or myself leading your ministries. Um, the off the charts cool quotient wasn't necessary. Although some churches have it, um, and but we are it wasn't part of it. right. Right? Yeah. Uh, big modern building. Uh, some of the congregations that are most effective with young people have new state-of-the-art facilities, but not all. This does not have to be a measuring stick of successful youth ministry. Uh, big budget. Contemporary worship. Uh, when we went through this uh, early on with um, the, the people that had gathered with us here, that was, a, that was something that they wrestled with a little bit, contemporary worship. Uh, if it's something that you still want to dive into a little bit, I, I would say feel free to enter that into the comments section. We'd love to have a conversation about that. A watered-down teaching style, hyper-entertaining ministries. And so those are the ten. And so the research pointed towards six essential strategies that were, um, were important to help young people discover and love your church. And we've been going through them systematically. The first one we went through was unlock keychain leadership. The second one was empathize with today's young people. The third was take Jesus' message seriously. Fourth was fuel a warm community. Fifth was prioritize young people and families everywhere. And lastly, the one we're going to focus on today is be the best neighbors. Now, last time, Jen, actually, you led this. No, you didn't lead that one on your own. I did number four. 
Yeah, you did number four. Uh, number five we did together, prioritize young people and families everywhere. Some of the responses, the key takeaways that we heard from that session uh, are listed here. Um, we recognize that culture determines priorities, and sometimes when we think about prioritizing with our families, um, for our families uh, with youth ministry, is that sometimes the environment and the culture around us sometimes sets that up, and so we need to recognize that. Uh, we, we also looked at inclusiveness for all ages in our church. That was an important takeaway for our group. Uh, beware of labels, use names. So something that, that happened a lot in that conversation was we, we create these categories for ministries or categories for people, and we recognized that that wasn't really helpful. Uh, we actually needed to, to use the names of the people versus um, a category that we plunked them into. Right? That was a big, big takeaway for us. The youth, no, the young Sally adults. And John. And right. That was really important. Yeah. Mentoring came up as a really important takeaway for us. What does it look like to incorporate that in the church? Uh, more intentional about uh, including our young people in different elements of the church. And then meeting young adults and youth where they are at. We've got this list. Anything jump to you, Jen, that you think we need to, to, to touch on yet before we jump into the content for today? Um, no, not necessarily, but I'm just looking at number five again, more intentional, including our young people. That also includes um, not just including them in physical things, but just asking them their opinion about things. Like, right. not just, okay, now you're in this ministry, now you're in that. But, like, what do you think? Sitting down, actually having a conversation with people. Um, I think that is what I was thinking about as we were going through this list. Before this time that we're doing here, mm -hmm. um, I had a meeting with a church in Iowa. Oh. And one of the things that was really interesting in our conversation was a, a key takeaway, because they're going through the growing young as a cohort mm -hmm. for two years, okay. right? So one of the things that they recognized that was really important to them was um, this element of listening, yeah. right? This element of listening. And so what does it mean to listen to one another? Mm -hmm. And when you point it out to be more intentional about including our young people, what does it look like to listen to them, to active. hear their hearts? Yes, listening. active, active listening. listening. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a big term actually nowadays. Yeah. Active listening, not just jumping in with your own opinion and what you want to say, but letting the conversation flow from the person you're speaking from. Mm -hmm. um, and even having that awkward not jumping in right away, right? Like just, yeah, letting it unfold by itself. So there's, there's this great movie called Shrek. Have you ever heard of it? <laughs> yes, we yeah. just watched it the other day. <laughs> yeah, so Donkey does this thing with Shrek, and he says, you're like an onion, Yes. right? You're going, they're doing this walk to find the princess, right? Yeah. yeah. And so he, like you're, you're like an onion. Part of listening is about unraveling the onion, right? There, we've got so many layers. There's so many things going on, which points, of course, to cultural mm -hmm. issues uh, in light of, of how we do ministry, what, what's, what's important. And so, yeah, so think about that list, but we're going to move on. We're going to move on to today's topic, uh, which is be the best neighbors. And I kind of find it appropriate in light of today's context. Yes, it fits very well. It really, really does, doesn't it? It's very timely. So when we think about the church, what does it mean to be the best neighbors? When we think about growing young, what does it mean to be the best neighbors? Isaiah age 20 says, Christianity is about the restoration of how it's supposed to be. I know we're feeling right now that that's a desire we all have. Mm -hmm. But we've been given hope. And we have been redeemed. And we've been empowered by the authority of God to go out and change the world. I want to share a story, Jen, of, of a young lady who I met uh, in 2014 for the very first time. Her name is Miranda lovely young lady. We had a group of us, 75 students and leaders, went down to High River to serve that community after the flood. And we went as a leadership team going into the church at High River CRC, and um, the pastor there said, we've got this young lady. She's the only youth in our church. The only youth. She's 17 years old, do you think she can help us be part of this leadership team? We said yes, Absolutely. but we had no idea what we were going to have her do. <laughs> so we spent a little bit of time um, having her sit at the table with us. Mm -hmm. 
just listening to who we are and what we were all about, because she had never heard of serve, she had never heard of many of the people that were coming for the first time, except for that senior pastor, who graciously said, let's create a space for her. As the week went on, she started understanding uh, the bigger picture of the gospel, recognizing that Christianity is about the restoration of how it's supposed to be, which is a grand statement, but what does that practically mean for our lives? And so as the week went on, um, she fell in love with the idea of church more and more. Here's what happened. At the end of our week together, because she heard the gospel message being proclaimed in many, many ways by the hands and feet, but also through worship and the, the, the text itself, um, she says, I, I, I want that for me. So she literally picked up and moved from that place in High River to Edmonton and became part of a church plant that didn't, hadn't even started yet because she realized that the dream was much bigger than just something she could imagine on her own. And as she became part of that church plant, she became part of the children's ministry. She became part of youth, and now she's currently in um, university to get fully immersed into ministry. She interviewed me a couple of weeks ago, not more than a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, because she said, I, I want to learn more about what it means to be a leader in this world as a church. Mm -hmm. Miranda is one of these stories when we think about being the best neighbors who understood that. Yeah. It's a radical, radical, um, yeah, not, not a shift, but, but an understanding of what the heart of the gospel is all about. Can I just say how brave that was? Like, honestly. It's totally brave. Like, so brave. It's totally brave. And we, we actually <laughs> thought, what are you doing? Yeah. Right? right? <laughs> but that's what God calls us to be in this yeah. world. Yeah. To take radical steps of faith and risk and say, I'm in your hands. Mold me as you will. Isn't that, isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So that's Miranda. And, and so it's made me think a little bit more about... Um, the work that we're called to be in our communities. Um, so there was a young man who actually was on that serve back in High River uh, who came from one of the congregations here. And I remember his mom calling me and said, listen, I'm, I'm struggling with my son. Do you mind meeting with him? So I took the long drive, took him out for dinner and said, hey, what's going on? I had a bit of a relationship with him. And he shared with me some of the struggles that he had been going through. So I said, what's, what's your anchor? What's your anchor? He says, my anchor is actually recognizing how God is working in our communities and recognizing that things like serve, like missions, like being in the Bell Mead community is, is giving me hope for our church. Recognizing that God is doing this amazing thing through us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes doing extraordinary things through extraordinary people and extraordinary moments yeah. in our lives. Yeah. And so it made me wonder, and this is where I want to talk to you a little bit, and I'd love the listeners to process this a little bit as well, is um, the question is, if, if our church covenant wasn't here tomorrow, would the community miss it? You had some thoughts. Not on the answer, maybe, but maybe on something else. Yeah. Um, do you mean about what we're doing now? Yeah. I mean... Covenant in the last year or two, I'd say, um, is actually moving out of our church building and more into our community, I'd say. I mean, I think uh, that that was a big speed bump for us. That was a big one. Um, we've done things, uh, like, I mean, we've always done VBS, uh, Vacation Bible Camp. So, I mean, last year was a big, a big push for our community kids to come in. Um, and, you know, we had at least 60% of the kids from last summer were from our community. Wow. Yeah, that, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I know also Canada Day, right? Mm -hmm. We've been going out, right? Um, our Rise Up With Jesus event mm -hmm. <laughs> that we were going to be putting on for this Easter. I mean, that was just another event that we were inviting people in. But... It is important for us to be moving past our physical doors and going 
into our neighborhood so that we are more of a visible presence actually out there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, a wonderful example actually of that is that we have a number of members who are going into the Belmead school. Every week they'll go in and they will read with kids and do some math with some kids um, and they are making our presence known there. So, yeah, we're making some steps. And this is important for our students to see. Yes. To see it being lived out, to see it being a, an expression of, of who we are. Yeah. Not just as a church community, but also as families of faith. One of the things that I think is really important for understanding, for us to understand, is we, we need to think back to our empathizing goal. Yeah. So when we think about uh, moving forward and, and being that presence, we need, to tur need for churches to also understand and minister to their context. To pastor to the culture. Mm -hmm. um, why? Well, for one, it, it connects with our call as a church. Matthew 28, go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 6, which is the Shema, talks about this, this element of, of knowing God, the one God, and loving him unconditionally as he loves us, but then realizing that we need to express that, to impress that not just on our own children, but on our covenant children. Mm -hmm. Not specifically talking about covenant CRC, right. but the baptismal vows that we talk about, um, that we um, express every time we, we sprinkle that water mm -hmm. and welcome that new child into mm -hmm. our community. And I also think back to, um, like actually our notes from the, the previous session about meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that, during that session we were talking about our own people here in Covenant, but I think that also refers to our, our neighbors, like our, our community as well, meeting people where they're at. We have, um, we have a lot of needs here in Belmead, and, um, and I think we need to really investigate, well, what are those needs? How can we support? How can we encourage? Um, instead of just maybe blindly doing it, we, I think we need to be intentional about that, right? Meeting people where they're at, what, what do they need? Listening to what they need. <laughs> Because we can make assumptions, yes. but that's not what we're called to do. Right. We're called to listen well, to minister to the margins, and recognize that um, our plans are not God's plans, and listen to where he's actually leading us to go. Yes. Um, and lastly, if we claim it, then we must live it. Um, this is a hard statement for a lot of us, because it basically says rubber hits the road. Yeah. If we're claiming this, then, then we need to live that out. And part of the Shema's statement is, is exactly that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Write this on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Yeah. Write this on your foreheads and on your hands. Um, this is who we are. We are a Christian community that wants to express and reflect that love to those who desperately need to hear it, to shine the light. And if we claim it, then we must live it it needs to be abundantly clear, mm -hmm. right? Because again, in past sessions, we've talked about how um, our teen and youth can see through that those muddy waters, those that BS, if you will, yeah. from a mile away. If we're not ready to prove it, they're gonna think, what are you talking about? You, you know, you're, you're not even meaning to do this, right? And these are kids who also want to see action, right? Absolutely. They wanna see you follow through with what you're actually saying. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. It's so important. So we've gone through those steps. So we want to leave you with uh, two big questions. And we do want you to contribute to this conversation. So whether it's on the YouTube page uh, for Covenant CRC Edmonton, that's what it's actually called, or the Covenant Church Family mm -hmm. Facebook page, here are the two questions that we want you to reflect on. And what we will do is we'll actually write the questions in the um, in the um, the heading of the entry when we post it. So the question is, what are you already personally doing to stay in touch with the culture around you? You want to read the next one. Um, the second, what are some of the positive and life-giving steps your congregation is taking? to be the best neighbor to the world outside your doors. So what are we doing as a church to minister to the people outside of our church building? Perfect. Yeah. Let me pray us uh, closed, and then um, thank you for joining us. Thank you. 
Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, gather together virtually uh, to take another stab at um, our, our sixth session for Growing Young. Lord, there's a lot of content here for us to absorb, but we pray. We pray that we will truly be examples of good neighbors in our communities, whether it is around the physical building of this church, but also in those places in which we're called to live in our neighborhoods. And we pray this all in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.